Hi guys! Today we're going to go through a Bible journaling from Matthew 16 to the end of my Bible, or not the end of my Bible, the end of the book of Matthew. And so I'm going to just kind of show you what I have done in this part. And this is the New Living Translation. I like to study in different versions, but my sister and I talked about it, and I said, I'm going to read this version like a book and just uh, read through the entire thing as I journal. So anyway, Matthew 16, I have Keys to the Kingdom. And then we have here the Mount of Transfiguration. And so here we had um, at the Mount Tran of Transfiguration, there was Moses, Elijah, and Jesus, and Peter, James, and John, which were like the inner circle of Jesus. Okay, switching over here, you'll see a miracle money when Jesus brought money to Peter so that they could pay their taxes. And I just kind of take it easy when I'm coloring. I'm enjoying the process. My art doesn't have to be perfect. But one thing I did take up to make my art a little bit better was I decided to use my adult coloring and also even regular coloring books to see if I could get to be a better artist for my Bible journaling. So we see some sheep and Jesus. Okay, we're going to just do another flip through. And I like to journal a little bit like this, you know, where I'm kind of doing like stick figures and things. And this here shows how the Word of God is. It's kind of like interlocking, like sewing everything in the Bible and like a puzzle. It all goes together. You have to interpret Scripture with Scripture. And if that helps you in your study, I hope it does. I just kind of, like I said, I drew a picture of like how sewing machines, everything is interlocking. It all goes with each other. Okay, here's another drawing I did. And uh, just use some gold and different pencils. And switching over to here. And my husband's coming in. He's working in the back. And I used a gold pen here. Here I used some crayons. Just some pinks and things. And then Faith to Move Mountains. How's it going out there, Dal? Uh, just getting ready to work on it. Okay. And over here I have just some little clouds. And I just put, um, some people rejected the kingdom of God, so it was given to other people. And uh, say hi. Hi. He's out there working and I'm in here doing a video. <laughs> and uh, and then the, the stone that the uh, builders rejected became the cornerstone, which is Jesus. And here's something pretty interesting. I've been praying and looking over the Lord's Prayer a lot this year. I really just felt like the Lord told me to pray the Lord's Prayer. And um, Think about this. Before Jesus came, and he, when he came, he brought the kingdom of God, which is basically like, you know, I relate it to like, I come from a really big family. It's like being born into a big family and all the things that my dad taught me, my brothers and sisters taught me, my mother taught me. Of course, you know, God being our father. And uh, before Jesus came, there was no kingdom. They didn't have all the things like we have now. So it'd be like being outside of a family until Jesus came. I mean, they looked forward to the cross to get saved. We look back at the cross. I hope there's not dirt on my hands. I was outside working. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Okay, now going over here to the next part. I just, you know, capitalized some words and kind of colored them in just to kind of give it a different look and I drew some trees okay just giving you some ideas for your art and don't be afraid you don't have to be perfect in fact I enjoy when people aren't perfect and I do enjoy the perfect work too just be yourself and enjoy your bible reading the mo the main thing is to get from the text what God is speaking to you all right so here we go and if you want a bible like this I'm pretty sure they have one on Amazon any wide margin bible would be good 
Um, okay, so here we go. The religious leaders at that time, the Lord said they were dirty on the inside and, you know, they should have been clean. You know, they, they were teaching others and they weren't right with God. And then here we have more pictures. Let's see. What am I looking at? Matthew 24. It's like birth pains, which I believe right now that Jesus is coming soon. I, you know, there's this in Matthew 24, it talks about the generation that saw Israel become a nation, which would be my mom's generation. Israel, uh, you know, became a nation in, I believe, 1948. They had their uh, wars and whatever. And then they became a nation after 2,000 years. Can you imagine that? And they said that that generation will not die until the Lord comes back. And what's really interesting is, is this whole passage, you know, if you study it out, you'll enjoy it. Okay, now getting back, Matthew 25. We're talking about Israel becoming a nation here on the side. Do some pictures down here. And uh, here's my little tiger trying to be a better uh, uh, artist. So let's see here. You can see some of my artwork. Drew a cat. <laughs> And uh, here I do a dog and a dog. So I do like to draw, you know. Um, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Praying, if possible, let this cup pass from me. Referring to his death on the cross. And then we have Peter, where Jesus said to him before... The rooster throat crows three times. You will deny me three times. And that's exactly what he did. Some flowers I drew down there. Here we go again. So the religious leaders were just so bad at that time that they conspired with Judas to kill Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And I wrote Jesus as the Messiah. This is just crayon work. I've been working a lot with crayons lately and drawing. Just working with color mainly. Here's a little caterpillar. Um, one thing that's interesting is if you read in, in uh, the end here, when Jesus rose from the dead, do you know that many, like I think it was like, I don't know, I want to say 500, but I have to look at it. But many people also rose out of their graves. Godly people rose from their graves right then. And they walked around too. <laughs> people, you know, if you haven't seen that, check it out. Then, of course, the resurrection of Jesus and uh, we have here, like, where um, the religious leaders and people conspired with the people to lie about his resurrection as well. Um, and then here is the very end of Matthew, and I just drew some bugs and some butterflies and some flowers, so... There you guys go. That's my update on my Bible journaling. I really love it. I have several Bibles. Actually, I have a third one. I've got like three Bibles I work out of. I'm working out of this one right now, and I really like it. So if you aren't Bible journaling, try it out. If you are Bible journaling and you're not happy with your art like I wasn't happy, go get some uh, adult coloring books. Get some regular coloring books. Practice drawing more pictures. And uh, practice makes perfect. And you know what? It doesn't matter if you're perfect. The main thing is that you get the passage in your heart. And so when you're coloring and things like that, you can think about what you wrote. And what I like to do is I like to read the passage, then color the picture, and uh, just keep reading it like that. And it's just a fun thing. You can sit there when people are watching TV and just read a page. And it's fun. You know, no, not necessarily a big study time, just a light study and it's a great way to read some other versions of the Bible. Like, I personally like the Amplified because it's the closest to the Greek and the Hebrew and then the King James. But sometimes it's good to read and learn um, from other ones. But, I mean, I know some people have different views on that. But I, when I go to study, I like the Amplified and the King James. All the other ones I enjoy, but I those are my study Bibles when I go to you know, bring out all my gear, so to speak, and do a nice study. So, oh, because I think that, you know, you got to get the closest to the Hebrew and the Greek that you can so that, you, you know, and I can look up things too on the Hebrew and the Greek on the internet and, it, you know, interlinear Bibles and all that too, so that you get the exact meaning. But for this activity, you know, I you can read and sometimes it's good because it might be, you know, 
helps you maybe in the today's language to understand a little bit better some of the passages. Okay, guys, just a little flip through here if you haven't seen these. <laughs> so, guys, remember, big or small, you too can be a backyard farm. And also, too, let me know if you are a Bible journaler. And uh, any tips that you have for my art, I would appreciate it. Like I said, I'm not the greatest artist, but I'm working on it. Okay, guys, remember, big or small, you too can be a backyard farm. God bless.